flying ninja. What's up everybody? This is the Fly Ninja and what I'm going to be showing you guys today is how to make anything look like ice out of a soda bottle in order to end up with something like this. During another experiment, I was even able to make a, um, a plexiglass dagger look like it's made out of ice. Like here. So, there you have it. So, I want to make this pipe look like it's made out of ice. Well, the first problem is it is not blue. And so, in order to speed this up, I'm not going to use paint. I'm just going to use simple painter's tape and see how that works. Here's one side. And the other. Doesn't really matter if you have any kind of wrinkles in there. I think the uh, wrinkles actually help out, uh, help it look a bit more like ice because it'll have that natural shape and form. So now. Soda bottle. Some scissors. And a PVC cutter if you have one. Get the top, and then find a good spot. Um, I use Dugan in order to get off the uh, parts right here, but you can also just simply cut off the, the white. Because whenever you rip off the tags on a bottle, um, it's probably just best to cut off the white instead of trying to go in the time of. Uh, Goo going it away and then scratching off. But I'm going to go on the seam just in case if it doesn't melt later. It doesn't really matter where you cut it from here, but I tend to avoid. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you cut it like up here or not. It, uh, whatever you want to use is great. I just want to avoid like all these uh, shapes because they're already uh, hardened, which is going to make them hard to um, to bend back and form an ice look. So, I need that. Oh. May have this guy. This. All right. So. Take your pipe. And bam, looks like ice now. <laughs> like that. Make sure you have some type of gloves because this is going to get really hot. Make sure that you have a tight grip on it because otherwise it's going to heat up and the edges are going to want to curl back. So if you don't heat it up properly, or if you don't have a grip on it properly, it's going to mess it up. Now to put it on the low setting. What I usually go for is the big open areas, and I try to hit the, uh, the edges afterwards. That way, whenever you really hit the edges, you can smooth them out. Smooth it out. Already, it's doing that shrink, uh, shrink rack effect. I don't recommend you guys putting this, these on um, a bow, and if you're going to put them on uh, like a PVC bow or whatever, and you heat it up, just so uh, you don't put it on the limbs like I did, because the limbs are what's supposed to be flexible. And when, whenever you're doing this, you're also heating up a PVC pipe, or whatever you're heating up around it. Which means that it may go back to its original shape for you bowyers out there. So what I would do next time if I were to do this, is either put it on in, like, near the handle or at the very top, where the, uh, the CEOs of the knots are. That way, you don't uh, put this on any part that's going to bend and either misshapen your bow or something else that hasn't happened yet to me. So putting that on high mode now. Don't be afraid to get up close, but if you're going to have um, it close, just make just use, uh, sure that don't edge is too much like right here. The edge is already starting to curl back and whatnot. That's what you want to avoid. I'm just showing you guys how this works. So whenever I heat up edges, 
uh, I take my, uh, this is a welder's glove, if you don't know what it is, um, I just take my welder's glove and I uh, wipe it. It's gonna look, it's gonna be hot on your finger for a little bit, but that's how I get these things uh, done faster. Over here, because this side still hasn't been fully compressed. Try to make sure that you don't uh, stay in one place too long. Whenever you use, uh, use paint. Uh, if you've already lacquered it up um, and try to uh, cover it with protection, it might decide to come back and wet the bow. And whenever you try to wipe or heat it up again, what it's going to do is it's going to come back at you and wi uh, wipe off the paint. So just be careful of that. So what I'm making sure now is that there's no other parts that need to be uh, shrunk, like up here. I still need to get the very tip of the edges. And what I want to avoid are any uh, unnatural seams. Seams are going to pop up. I'm not exactly sure how to make them go away or how to deal with them just yet, but this is what I do uh, right now. I just kind of heat them up and then wipe them down to make it look like they're melting into uh, whatever I'm trying to make it look like ice. That way it's not just a hard edge. Also be careful if you're using uh, the blue tape, it'll still kind of burn. You might have to paint that afterwards or just put some more tape over it and try to make it not have a seam. Yeah, that's going to pop up either way. Okay, that's almost all of the... Uh, I just still gotta get this one up here. feel to it, all you have to really do is heat up the, uh, the plastic just a little bit more, just like on the edges over here, and it'll give it that frost effect. Right over here, see? Try to be careful that you don't heat it up too much because it might burn a hole through the plastic. I usually do it around the, uh, the higher wrinkles uh, because that tends to look a lot better whenever you're doing this. I mean, it might just be a personal preference, but that's what it looks like uh, to me, as far as uh, ice goes. This is also a good uh, way to cover up whatever kind of mistakes that happen. So if you have um, paint kind of melted and it's, uh, it's kind of showing up that it's already wiped off underneath and you can't get it, then you could probably just heat up the plastic and the white part, the white frost look will cover it for you. see here it kind of shows it um, and that is how to make things look like ice so you can do this with uh, pretty much anything I think as long as it's not flammable and you don't want to break it or anything um, but anything that's pretty much sturdy uh, like, you know PVC pipe I guess you know um, yeah, you just make it look like ice. See here, get this close up. So it has that nice 
shine to it and you'll get parts like down here where it's kind of see-through that's a good part but that's kind of what you want to avoid with this look is that it because uh, if you heat it up too much it's going to look like that and that will get rid of the whole ice illusion thing that on the other hand kind of looks nice where it's got this little pocket that um, kind of looks like the ice melted and it's just kind of uh, you know it's being natural that's, that's what ice does it melts I still need to work on the seams a little bit here but as far as the whole thing goes that's pretty much how you, how you do stuff so now what I want to show you guys is the uh, the ice boat that I was working on like I said before this is a uh, request that somebody had for me he, he wanted me to make think something look like ice and so I figured that little trick out and I think it turned out pretty well um, I used to shoot 35 but since it uh, kind of got heated up with the old ice thing it uh, doesn't actually shoot 35 anymore I'm not sure what it shoots but I don't want to pull it to the full uh, length to find out and then have this stuff break on me but I'll show you how it shoots So yep, and now to demonstrate some of the regular arrows of wood that I've got, and then uh, some of the LARP arrows that I've got. 